we're going to talk about heavens. We want, uh, there's things about heaven, and uh, it's also talk about the kingdom of God. How many of you believe in heaven? How many can tell me what do you believe in heaven? What, what is heaven? Where is heaven? What, what, is, what does it look like? How many have tasted heaven? How many know this is a good place? Right? So, it's it just interesting. While I was preparing this word, this, this message, this about what I'm going to do, I, I suddenly find uh, myself in an in a, in a tr- extreme joy. And that um, it's, it's, it's a different joy. It's a joy that comes from above. Because when you start to see what heaven looked like, Suddenly, you, there's this something in your spirit that want, that desire, that it's just a joy that comes in. How, how, many have, how many have joy, laughter before? Jamila said, of course. <laughs> how, many have, how many of you have laugh and laugh and laugh that you cannot stop laughing? How many have laugh and laugh that you can't even breathe? Have you done that? Okay, let me see this one. How many of you have love and love that even it, it was painful? It was painful? Mm-hmm. Now, somebody said to me, it's like a woman giving birth. I said, no, it's not like woman giving birth. You don't get it. No, it's not that. What I also learned, and also it's something that I experienced that when I was preparing this message, it's something that hit me. And it gave me joy. It gave me not just joy, and it also gave me something to, uh, almost like a satisfaction. Like a, um, what I learned is, you know, you can suffer for the kingdom. How many know what I'm talking about? You can suffer. It can be painful. It can be suffering. Some, there's a song that called this pain in the offering. How many know that? Right? right. You know that song? This pain in the offering. Um, but what I, what I experienced for a moment, I think it lasts for about like 20 minutes or 25 minutes. It was the joy of those who have suffered for the kingdom, suffered for the gospel. Those who have laid down their life for heavens. That's going to be the most greatest joy, joyous people that you're going to meet in heaven. You know, I say this many, many times, heaven is not a communist country. It's not like we're going to wear the same clothes, wear the same shoes, have the same hairstyle, eat the same cafeteria food. You know what I'm saying? It's, I, don't think heaven is, I don't think heaven is like that. He's not a communist country. Right? But the most joyful people you will find in heaven are those who literally has, has cry, has been suffered, has, have pain, and they hold on, and they spread the word of God, they share the gospel with others, they are the one who's going to have more joy in heaven. When they know this joy, when they have a taste of that joy, not just when we're going to be in heaven, when they have a joy that manifests, they have no problem at all, no pain. Even the pain will come, the persecution come. But the joy is going to be much stronger to live a life that is laying down the life for others. What I experience is, what I want to say is that if you lay down your life, even for your enemies, even for your worst enemy, and then one day you see those people in heaven because of what you suffer, what they make you go through, and then you bring them to heaven one day, that is going to be the most amazing joy that you can experience. You with me? Do you understand that? You're going to be in heaven, you're going to see other people who, who share the gospel with them, who witness to them, who shine their light to, towards them. Someone did. But what about you? What about me? Who am I going to bring to heaven one day? Sometimes they persecute you, sometimes they physically can you know, do things to you or verbally or whatever. But once they become a Christian, 
the joy of you in heaven, you know that you have now, bring that person with you in heaven. That is going to be the most amazing, amazing experience and joy, joyful people that you know. Right? You understand that? But what about those who doesn't? <laughs> you're still going to be in heaven because you're saved, you receive Christ. But your joy is not going to be the same because we have laid down the life of the gospel. Right? How many want joy? <laughs> joy of the Lord is my strength. And I believe those people, they're going to be so joyful, happy, that, like I was asking earlier, describing the joy, that it's, uncont it's uncontrolling joy. And I believe there's going to be people like this in heaven. But there are those who's been shy, who's been hesitant about laying down their life. We're going to see those who are laying down their life, and they are going to be the most joyful people. So what? When, when you see these things happen in your life, you, how, many, how many of you right now, you realize that you're going through a time or maybe um, you persecute someone who God used to bring the gospel to you or God used them to help you or God used them to equip you, God lead, used them to train you or God lead, used them to mentor you <clears throat> or to disciple you. And sometimes you don't understand it and you persecute those people, right? You don't agree with everything they say, which is your, your choice. And, uh, and sometimes there's a criticism. Sometimes, you know, but those people that bring this to you, that bring the, the word of God to you, that bring what God has for you and God is using them, you know what? Your persecution is going to turn into joy in their life. But now, what if you, now, if you're the one who's bringing those words to other people, what if you are the one who's receiving persecution? If you're the one who's receiving, you know, people freaking out to you, they judging you, they criticize you, they give you names, that's not what your parents give you, you know? You know what? Consider this as a pure joy. Consider this as a blessing, because God's, when, the, when God bless you, he said, it's also come with persecution. Why? Because that's where the joys come from. But you, you see, the, the, that pain cannot compare with the joy that God has for you. He has in store for you. When you're persecuted, when people come against you, when they criticize you, and because you're doing what God's called you to do, make sure you're doing the right thing, though. Don't just say, I'm doing God's will. It has to be the right thing, right? And when people are coming against you, consider this. When they, you win them one day for the Lord, when, when their eyes open one day, when they started to turn around, they started to hear God from you, through you, your joy is going to be amazing. So hold on, you know? So if there's people right now, when you share the gospel with them, you, they, don't, they still don't like you. Guess what? You know, those people, when they go to heaven one day, when you see them, you're going to, see, you're going to have more joy. Amen? All right, let's turn with me to, um, can you put on the verse? In, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, if you have your Bible, turn with me. And uh, how many have your Bible? How many know where Genesis is? All right. Genesis chapter 1, can somebody read it loud from the front row? Alexandra, can you read it for me? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created what? Can you spell heavens on your Bible? H E A V E N S. Give me the mic. H E A V E N S. Heavens. Right? In the beginning, God created what? Heavens. And? The earth. So now you see that heavens is it, more than one, but the earth is only one, it's singular, right? Now, also that in, in the Hebrew Bible, every time when it mentions heaven, it's always heavens, S. there's always plural, there's not just one. Some in the English translation, they, sometimes they just put heaven, but the Hebrew Bible, it's always 
more than one. It's always multiple heavens. We always heard the first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, right? So John in the book of Revelation went to the third heaven, right? So heaven, because heaven is so big, if you think you can talk about the planet Earth in half an hour or one hour, right? It's not possible because there's so much to, to describe the Earth. Can you describe Canada in one hour? It's impossible, right? We can probably describe Ajax in one hour, right? Now imagine you describe every nation, every country around the world. It's going to take a long time. If you're going to visit every country, it's going to take a long time. Now think about this. Heavens is a much, 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 much more bigger than the earth. And we cannot talk about everything. It, it's going to take a long, long, long time to literally understand everything. So we will, we will not be able to, first of all, we will not be able to, able to experience everything here on this, in this life. But one day we will. Right? One day when we're in heaven, we're going to be able to see a lot, much, much more for eternity. All right, so what's heaven look like? I don't know if, right. Um, in John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3, Jesus described one place in heaven. He's talking about his father's house. How many remember your father's house? Where you were born, where you were raised? Anybody remember? How many rooms does it have? Five, two, six. How many rooms do you have? Four. How many your father has? Three rooms and two kitchen. You remember your father's house, right? Okay, and Jesus said, in my father's house, I mean, and I believe the father has made probably more than just one house, but he said, in my, my father's house, there's many rooms, which is good, amazing. If it was not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? So the father house has room, but the place is not prepared. Jesus said, I'm the one who's going to be prepared. I remember not too long ago, I, have to, I will have to prepare the room for my, my children, for my, for my kids. They don't like me to call them kids anymore. I'm just teasing them right now. So for my daughters, and I know I, I want to surprise them. I paint their room, decorate it, and when they, sh when they come back, they say, oh, my room is nice. Right? You know that feeling? Well, I do my best, and when Esther comes back, I said, I don't like the color. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. I cleaned, I painted the whole room, and you don't like the color. I thought, okay. So Jesus said this, I'm preparing a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and... Take you to myself. Where I am, you may also be. Right? And so, another translation says it has many mansions. So the room, a room is like a mansion. Your room. How do you want to live in a mansion? You want to live in a mansion. You want to live in a castle? Right? Casaloma? Right? So, <clears throat> how, many have, how many have visited castle before? Anybody has visited castle? You went to Europe, you went to this old castle. How many rooms this castle has? Some people got lost, right, in this castle, right? And this is what Jesus said. You see, for him it's a room, but for us it's a castle. It's just one room has like, ooh, so many, right? How many want to describe your castle? How many know what it looks like? I, I hope mine has a swimming pool. Don't you want a swimming pool? Yes? I tell you why I want my have a swimming pool. Because in heaven, the Bible says there's no ocean. There's no seas. There'll be no seas. There's no ocean. So since I cannot go on the beach, I want, I want a swimming pool. Okay. Huh? The river is not the same. Right. So... So sometimes, you know, they say, no eyes have seen, no ears have heard what God has prepared for those who love him. But I want you to know that your father's house and your father's in heaven house and Jesus prepared for you and it's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. It's just, 
uh, but you don't want to be alone in a castle. How many want to live alone? I remember my dad one day, he bought a, he bought a beach house. And I love it so much. I was still, I don't know how I was, like maybe 12, 13 years old. My, my sibling, my brothers, my sister, they're older, I'm the youngest. And every time we go to this beach house, we're always excited because we play hide and seek. It has about 20 or 25 rooms in, in the beach house. It has four story high. Every story has, you know, a, a, a one, one dozen bedroom. And, I, I, and, I, and, and, and because I was the youngest, they always <laughs> they, they hide from me. And I, was, I had to look for them, you know. And I find that they're hiding all the way on top of the roof. <laughs> they play that game with me, right? You know? So, <clears throat> right. So, I want you to start thinking about this mention. You think about this house. This thing about this heaven that God has for you. The Father's house for you, right? And uh, you imagine the garden that he has, right? The Bible says there's grass as well. Okay, now, I, I want to go into the um, next one is... Um, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. So if you have your Bible, turn with me there, please. After this, I look, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice that I heard speaking to me like a trumpet, and said, come up here, I will show you what must take place after this. Right? The one who speak to John, the beloved, was like a trumpet, and it sounded like it said, come up here, I will show you what must take place. And at once I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven. So now I want you to see this. There's a throne in heaven, and one seated on the throne. So there's someone on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carmelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that has the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. So how many thrones do we have all together? 25. And I believe the one in the middle is probably bigger. He didn't say, but I believe it was bigger. It's bigger, but there's 24 thrones. And seated on the thrones, on the 24, are 24 elders, clothed in white garment and golden crown, and on their head, from the throne come flashes of lightning, rumbling and per and peals of thunders before the throne were burning seven torch of fire, which are the seven spirit of God. Now you get seven torches which of fire, which mean also the seven spirit of God, right? Now, if you can imagine this, in the middle of the throne, there's one throne, and we all know who's seated on the throne, right? The lamb. But around that throne is 24. And there are 24 elders, and also there are seven burning torches of fire, right? They are the seven spirit of God. Now, I want, to, I want to say something at this point. There are, we know, we met, we know some people who have been to heaven. But we also know that some other people that are trying to go to heaven on their own strength, on their own will, on their own ability. I want to say this at this point. Don't try to go to heaven on your own. If, unless you understand these verses, it's like this, John said he got an invitation. There's a voice that said, come up here. I will show you, right? Unless you have this invitation to go to heaven, and then your spirit was caught up, don't try to make it on your own. There are people who did try it, and they die, right? You see, like I said, there's many heavens. And when, when Daniel was in the third heaven, the second heaven, the second heaven is where the demonic realm is, right? Where the principalities, rulers, powers of darkness, they operate. And if you're not called to go to, God has not called you up to the third heaven. You're not equipped to go to the third heaven. You go to the second heaven, you go into the realm of the demonic, and it will kill you. I want to say this so that you be aware. Don't try to make it on your own. Unless you are invited, unless God invites you, right? Alexander and I, we know people that we met, we talk to them. They try and they die. 
So I just want to say this as clear as I can. And it's not, I don't want you to discourage, but I want you to know that if when God called you to go, he will make sure that you will come back safe. Right? And if he show you, your spirit is going to be strong. And um, I don't have time to go into details, but I've been a few times. God allowed me to experience heaven. He allowed me to experience the throne room. He, experienced, he allowed me to see the creatures in heaven. And then I was back in two hours. Some, well, it was one time. I, I, I thought it was only like one hour, but it was, it was like eight hours in the natural. But it was only one hour in the spiritual. Right? So I just want now, if you, can, if you can understand this, if you can visualize this in your heart, you know, right? But John, he was in the spirit. And when he started to see, you have to be in the spirit. Right, to also to to understand, to comprehend, to see what God is has for you. So, in other words, not just being born again. Your spirit need to be strong, need to be equipped. Right now, how did your spirit get equipped? How did your spirit get strong? Why would God call John to go? He's because he has laid down his life. Right, remember he was on the island of Patmos. We wanted to kill him. He survived, and he's been he's a man who's I believe he also prayed. You know, and like. Like we talked last time with Daniel and his friend, we prayed and God allowed them to see things in the spirit. God wants to reveal things to you in the spirit. Right. Now, Revelation 21, this is a whole thing. Now, I don't have the time to read the whole Revelation 21 and also 22. But if you have time, these are the two chapters that you want to read. You will see there's a lot more things than what we share here. Right. Uh, I'm going to, I am only going to touch a few things on that. Revelation 21, um, it said, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So the first heaven and the first earth pass away. So what is God saying? Not only that the, the earth will pass away, but the first heaven will be gone. Right? And this is, this is about um, after the, um, a thousand years after the, the Satan has been bound and it's been released, there's going to be uh, a, a spiritual warfare. There's going to be fight going on between heaven and the demonic, and everything will be gone. And God's going to create now a new heaven, not a new and an earth. It's going to be now a new heaven. So, so this is what's happened. When I saw there's a new heaven. Remember, we, we're talking about Revelation 21 here. We move way forward from chapter one, right? So the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The sea was no more. There's going to be no more sea, no more ocean, right? Which means the, the original first heaven and earth has sea, but the new one has no sea. And I saw the, own, I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, come down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, think about this. A new Jerusalem become as a bride. What does that mean? Right? So, the bride, right, is going to be the new Jerusalem. And I heard a loud voice from the front saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them. So now this is what's happening now. Who are those people? Who are the people that God called to live in the new Jerusalem, in new heaven, coming as a bride? So this is another thing that uh, we will touch in, in the future when we go into this. Who are those people who's going to be qualified, who's going to be God's going to call them? To be those one that's going to be dwelling with him in the new heaven. Now, there's a lot of people who's going to be in, in, in heaven when we pass, when we die, when we go to heaven. But and I want to say this. Not everyone is going to be in the new heaven. And we're, going to, we're going to see this in a moment, what the Bible says. Now, uh, also at this point, I want to share this. Some people, when they want to understand heaven, they talk to people who have visited heaven. They talk to people who have experienced, you know, near-death experience and all this kind of thing. I don't want to do this for, at this point. I don't want to go and have, listen to somebody a testimony. I want to, at this moment, at this point, to go with what the Bible says, with what the Scripture says. Is that okay? I want to make sure that we stick with the Word of God, what heaven looks like. All right? Because some of you come to me and say, I watch this person and learn this person, and I'm going to listen to you. It's not that I disagree with what they say, but I would say, we need to have, that, let the word of God be the foundation. All right? Okay. So, 
Jerusalem come down, prepares a bride, and then heard a loud, loud voice, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tears from their eyes. You remember I was telling you about the joy? Who are those people? You see, God has this incredible wisdom. He said, those people who have shed tears and shared the gospel shine for me, even though it's for the persecution. They are the one God who said will dwell with me. They are, God's not going to just bring anyone who say, "Hallelujah, praise the Lord." You know, no, He's not going to do that. He's, he is going to find those people who lay down their life, who have cried before the Lord, who have people who have literally tortured, even killed them. You know, because for the sake of the gospel, right? They have no problem because. That what killed the flesh cannot compare to those. Is the Bible said, do not be afraid, fearful, fearful those who kill the flesh, but rather be afraid or fearful the one that can, you know. Because the one who can say to those people, say, either you go to hell or you go to heaven, right? But God is the one who knows those who can kill the spirit or not. So that's why the Bible says, be be, rather be fearful of the one who know, who, who, who after death, what's, what's going to happen. And the Bible says that everybody is going to stand before God one day. Right? <clears throat> so make sure that you're not one of those people who persecute God's people. Make sure that you on this side who's reaching out, you're spreading the gospel, you're shining to other people, you you are witnessing to other people. And if persecution comes, so what? <clears throat> it's all right. No problem. Right? So God will wipe away every tears from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, no crying, no pain anymore. For the former things... I need some water. <clears throat> Thank you, Astra. You're paying attention. <clears throat> so neither shall be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former thing has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. How many like do you have new things? I want all things new. Well, when I say all things mean all things. When the Bible says all things, it means all things. What all things mean? All things. You know what you look like here? You know what I look like? Even that's going to be new. Even the body is going to be new. So, so you know what? Don't waste too much time <laughs> painting this body. It's going to be new one day. There's going to be more glorious body. Right? And you, you, can, you see, this is the thing. The Bible says that when God will create everything, even, even we're going to change, we're going to look like... Yeah, we're going to be new, but we're going to look like what? And so we're going to look like Him. We are created in His image. So God is going to recreate us back to its original, like back to what He looked like. So what did Jesus look like? You remember we took... He who sits on the throne, right? He has what? Appearance of Jasper and Carmelian. So now you get a little perspective what it's going to look like. Jasper and Carmelian. You're going to look like that. Right? Okay? So, Revelation 21, 19. Right. So, the foundation of the wall of the city. So what, now we know there's the, this, in heaven there's a city. The city has a wall and the wall has foundation. And was adorned with every kind of jewel. How many like jewels? How many wear jewels right now? Can I see it? How many wear jewels? What do you have? What kind of jewels do you have? How many have any stones? Any, any pearls? Any diamonds? Any, what do you have? Huh? Diamonds. Joan. Wow. All right. So, <laughs> you see, you see, don't waste your time with those little, you know, because this is it. The foundation of, this, of the wall, it said, with every kind of jewel, the first was jasper, 
The second was sapphire. Anybody want sapphire? The third was agate, and fourth is emerald, and so on and so on. So value is the foundation of the wall. It's going to be buried under the wall. If that is going to be foundation, then what's the wall going to look like? If, if you're going to paint the, the foundation, then how's going to your wall going to look like? And if God put those stones, you know, you know what I was meditating, and I was God, I said, God, but if this is going to be the foundation of the wall, and God speaks something to me very quickly, in, in a sense that, because it's going to be a strong foundation. Do you know those, those stones, you know like diamond is the, or the hardest stone you can, you can get? You can try to smash it with another stone. You cannot break diamond with another stone. Because it's, it's a harder stone. So here you see, verse, Jewel, verse stone is going to be the strongest stone. So it's going to be the foundation of the wall. So it's going to be the, so which, which means that verse wall will not fall. And somebody in the prayer intercession was talking about today, I think uh, Caption was talking about the wall. Of when Jeremiah was talking about the wall of Jerusalem that God wanted us to, uh, want to rebuild. But that heaven, nobody can come against that wall. Nobody can tumble it down. Nobody can destroy that wall because the foundation is going to be so strong. Right? So, verse 22. Then I saw no temple in the city. So, in normally every place, you know, a, um, those of you who you know, live in England, you grew up in England, you know how English used to put town and cities in England? They first put a church, and then people started to build houses around the church. That's how they've been doing for many, many, many years. They never started a place and then put a church later. They put a church first, and then people started to build around it. They make it a town, they make it a city. And then this temple said this, verse 21, 22, sorry. It said, I see no temple in the city. So there'll be no temple, there'll be no a place of Church, a place of worship. For its temple is the Lord God the Almighty. So God himself is going to be the temple. Lord Almighty and the Lamb. The city was, has no need of sun or moon to shine. Right? You don't need the sun or the moon. So there will be no night and day. How many want to, how many want to see that? The night and day. Right? For the glory of God give lights. And its lamb, lamb is the lamb of God. Right? So, you remember we're talking about the fire wise? We have the lamp, we have the oil, we have the light. Now it says, the Lord give, the Lord give its light, and the lamb is, is a lamb. By its light will, by its light will the nation walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Right? So people will walk according to the light. They will bring the glory into it. So the, what we understand is the light is what, when we walk with him, we walk according to his light. His, that's where the glory comes. And the gates will never be shut by day. Right? There will be no night there. See that? Are you looking at it? There will be no night there. No night. There will be only day. They will bring into the glory the hours of the honor of the nation. Right. So now we see that in heaven, no temple. There will be no night. There will be only day. And the God, the, it will, he's, he's the one who's going to provide the light. And those who walk, those who walk with him, they're going to be the glory. Right. So the light is going to shine through them. Right. Revelation 21, 25. Revelation 21, verse 21 to 25. And the 12 gates, now we understand, those walls have strong foundation, but also have 12 gates. And the 12 gates were 12, were 12 pearls, each of the gate made of a single pearl. A single pearl make a gate? What kind of pearl is this? How many, have, how many of you have a ring right now? You have a pearl. John, you got a pearl, right? We'll give you a pearl one time. It was a good one. So, think about this. You have a pearl that's going to be at your house, going to be your door. Think about that. And this is not a house, by the way. It's, it's the city wall. It has this pearl. Can you imagine that? So what heaven look like? Is it beautiful? I believe it is. Right? 
You don't have to flick the light switch on to have lights. You don't have to pay hydro bill. How many like that? No more hydro, right? So, so the 12 gates and each one pearl would be for one gate. And the street of the city was, pu was pure gold, transparent as glass. And I saw no temple in the city. And it's... Right. Okay. Now, I want to go to something else right now. So we already talked about this. Uh, how do you know that every time when we design a new area or we build a new road, we design a new town, you need engineer, you need architect, you need... What else do you need? Builders, designers. All right. In Hebrew chapter 11, verse 10, I want, you to, I want to show you, you mentioned has an architect, has a builder, and has an engineer. And who are those? Who are those people? Who are the ones that has that? Jesus said, I'm good to prepare this place for you, right? So in Hebrews chapter 10, said he said, for he was looking forward to the city that has... That has foundation. So we did talk about the foundation. Whose designers and builder is God. God himself is going to be your designer. Anybody like that? Can you design my bedroom? <laughs> Can you design my swimming pool? Can you design my kitchen? Can you build it for me? Well, God is a builder. God is the one who will design it for you. Oh, my God. Jesus said, my father's house has many rooms. Many mention, prepare the place for you, and he's the one who designed. I don't know what color he's, he, he's going to put mine on. Uh, maybe it will, sp spiritually, it will change color whenever I, I want a different color, right? <laughs> you don't have to paint it again and again, right? So, God is going to be the designer and the builder, right? Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, right? And we're going to see how he does this. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 12, not 2, verse 12. You have it? Right. Thank you, Daniel. For it is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. God used the power and his wisdom to build the earth. But when it comes to heaven, God used his understanding. How many, you know, a lot of people have power, a lot of people have wisdom, but sometimes they don't have understanding. How many know what I'm talking about? You talk to them, they have power. <laughs> you, share, you want to tell them your story, you want to talk about something, and you know what? They have wisdom, but they cannot have, they cannot have understanding. So when God stretched out the heaven with his understanding, if God used his understanding to build, right? He's the builder, he's the designer. Guess what? He surely is going to understand who you are for what he's building. Now, I'm saying for you, but it's, it's also for as every other thing as well. Right? He understands. Do you think God doesn't understand you? He does understand. He said, even every hair on your, her on your head is numbered except for Nathaniel. But it's okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> right? Every hair on your head is numbered. So this is a good thing. God knows everything. He knows. He understands. He understands every emotion. He understands everything 24-7. And God, if he's going to now in heaven, is going to do this with his understanding. Guess what? How many, how many of you, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't know, you did have, but how many of you have tried to go to, to see a builder, to see a, an architect, to see a designer, and said, I want to build it this way. And then the engineer said, no, you can't do it this way. And the builder said, mm-mm, it won't work. But with God... He understands, and he knows what you like. He knows who you are, and he will design it with his understanding. But now, it's not about just the color, by the way. He understands how we live our life for him on this earth. He understands what we've done for him. That is going to be one of part of his reward for us, all right? It's not just the size, the color, okay? Jeremiah chapter 12, 10, 12, we just did this one. Okay, now, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to have to switch a little bit about 
Who are the cities and who is going to be the one in heaven? Revelation 21, if we can go back. Revelation 21, verse 27. It says this, but nothing unclean will ever enter it. Nothing unclean. God is going to make everything new, but nothing unclean. So, guess what? There's no garbage day. There's no things that's dirty, nothing unclean, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false. Anyone who's done this, this kind of thing will not enter heaven, but only those who, who are written in the Lamb Book of Life. Now, this is a tough one. This is sometimes we, we look at this and say, but God... Everybody has done things, something. Everybody has done things bad. Everybody has said something a little bit not too nice, a little bit nasty, all this kind of thing. But, but here was, I want to share this with you guys. That's why God gives us the time to change. Our journey on this earth is not to stay the same. Our journey is to be able to change and to be transformed. And, and our mind is new, need to be renewed by his word so that we can become more like him. Does that make sense to you? God is not going to expect us to change. Do you see, the spirit, when you were born again, the spirit born again. But your soul is not born again. Your soul takes times to be renewed. Now, don't take this as an excuse as well. Because God also, whenever he speaks his word, he speaks to you, he says something to you, you want to also to walk along with what he's saying. All right? Okay, so, so there's nothing unclean that will enter it. No, no one who also does detestable things or false. So there'll be no liars. How many like that? No robbers. No thieves. Right? Okay. But those whose name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Okay, Luke chapter 12. Okay, I'm going to wrap up here. Luke chapter 12, verse 33 to 34. Um, okay, I'm going to do this one quick. And then, um, and this is, a, this is also something else different. So unless you see this in your spirit, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't want to say this as, as a theology or as, 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 a, as something that it's like revelation. But when I understand that, Jesus, he lived his life on the earth, not based according to earthly rules or earthly uh, laws. I think when he came on the earth, whenever his life, he was living his life based according to heaven's dimension, if you want to put it this way. You understand what I'm saying? Right? And I believe, since we understand that in heaven there's no seas, is it possible, I'm asking you this, is it possible that's why he can just walk on water? Hmm? Because he doesn't live according to our laws, the earthly rules and laws. His dimension is so different, right? So his understanding is like, I just walk, right? It's just something to share with you. So verse, uh, in Luke chapter 12, verse 33, 34, says this, sell your possession, Give to the needy, provide yourself with money bags, but do not grow old. Weave a, tre a treasures in heaven that does not fail, where there's no thief approaches and no mud destroy. For where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. So the treasures in, in heaven is also, you're going to find out, it's where your heart is. Where your heart is, is where your spirit is. Where your spirit is, is where God dwells. And where God dwells is also the temple of the Holy Spirit. And where the temple of the Holy Spirit is where the Holy Spirit abides. So where your heart is, this is where your treasure is going to be. Right? How many of you, you think your treasure is in, in one of those banks? This is not your heart. So the heaven's treasure is different. It's where your heart is. Right? All right? And how would you treasures, how would you have greater treasures in heaven where your heart is? The more amazing your heart is more pure, the more amazing your heart is more 
like who what God wanted to be, there's going to be much, much more treasures for you. So your heart is the key. All right? First Timothy chapter 6, 17 and 19. As for the rich in this present age, who are the rich in this present age? Anybody? We are people. As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God. You can be wealthy, great, wonderful, right? But also do not put your hope on those riches, right? But on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. And God will provide us everything we need. They are to do good. When someone is wealthy, God said, I intend you to also for the good thing. And to be rich in good work, to be generous and ready to share. And then when this happened, because the heart is huge, it's big. Verse storing up treasures for themselves as a good foundation for the future. So that they may take hold of what is truly life. So in heaven, this is the thing. The treasures that you, God gave here on the earth, God wants us to use this to multiply the treasures that is for us in heaven. You understand? So let's say, you remember the story of the, 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 the widow who has only the, with the widow's might? What she gave, the, I believe this is going to be much riches in heaven for her than those who have a lot. Maybe give a lot, but they didn't give it with, with their heart. See, it's not about the amount. It's not about the quantity. It's about the abundance of the heart. You know? And it's what your heart looks like, what your heart feels, what is in your heart. When, you, when your heart is huge, it's good, it's in, 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 in great works, ready to serve. Sometimes it's not just about the money that you give. Sometimes it's also the things that you say. Sometimes understanding. Sometimes the help. Sometimes just to listen to someone and to also to comfort and to understand them. And sometimes it, it's also in, into giving and to invest into people's life. Not just financially, but also to give them help, to give them counsel. There are people who, who always look for money and Jesus said, you will always have the pool with you, but you'll, you will not have me with you all the time. So there's, this is the thing that sometimes, what I'm saying is that if we all learn to be generous in many, many different ways, and to encounter people, and to love them, and to help one another. And this is what I say, that your treasure is going to be rich in heaven. But not just to collect, because people, some, you know, you and I, maybe we know some people who have a lot of money, they, they became arrogant, they became all this kind of thing, but this is, this is not good to have money and live like that. Literally, it's going to destroy them, right? Remember the story of rich man and Lazarus? God said to the rich man, you receive your reward in the earth. There's nothing else, right? Okay. Um, I'm going to stop here, and then we're going to um, continue next Sunday. I think there's a lot more. We're going, I want to talk about who are the, the, the true citizen who's going to be walking with him, what the Bible, what the Revelation say, what they look like. Now, I want to end with these verses. Daniel, you can put this on. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Next week, we, we're probably going to come back to the same verses and carry on. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, it says, He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit say to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in paradise of God. So, those who have an ear, let them hear. If you can hear, let hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, right? And not only you hear, when you hear it, you conquer. You cannot hear it and cannot be conqueror. You need to become conqueror. You need to be able to conquer things. You need to be able to conquer, you know, the battle in your mind. You need to be able to conquer it. You need to be able to rise up. You need to conquer every fear, right? One thing that God hates is those who cannot repent. And hold bitterness in their heart. Right? But those who hear it. 
and those who conquer, do not allow bitterness to rule in your soul, in your mind. Right? And I will grant to eat of the tree of life. You see, what God started from the beginning with the tree, he said, don't eat this, don't eat that, but, you know, it's a tree of life. Jesus is going to do the same thing, restore everything new again. Right? Amen? So, I, I pray that the thing that you hear today, that if you meditate on it, right, at least you get a picture of what heavens look like, what is treasured for you, what is treasured for me, and give you encouragement to continue to walk in the journey that God has for you. And if any persecution come your way, guess what? If you shed tears, God's going to wipe it. He's going to give you joy. It's not going to be that tormenting, crying kind of thing. It's, it's not going to be forever. You know, but I'm not talking about tears for the wickedness, tears for bad thing, but I'm talking about to really, you know, to, to cry for the thing that make God cry, what is, you know, what is in the heart of God. Amen? Right? So may God continue the message that I have given you today. May He can continue to multiply it, amplify it, releasing more things into your heart, into your spirit, so you can become conquerors and stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, and when, when we come back next week, hopefully we can continue to add more and equip more and train more. In the meantime, those who persecute me, I want to thank you very much. <laughs> those who call me names, you know, thank you. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, let's stand and pray. We're going to have communion.